In the previous video lecture, we covered radial immunodiffusion, in which antibodies are immobilized by incorporating in the agar medium, and antigens are free to move. Today we will study double immunodiffusion. Double immunodiffusion is abbreviated as DID. This technique is also known as a Cherlini technique or a Cherlini double diffusion. In this immunodiffusion both antigen and antibody diffuse radially from wells towards each other. And at the zone of equivalence visible line of precipitation is formed. This technique is mainly used for the comparison of the antigens. Let's say this is of a gar plate. We will cut out three wells such that a triangle is formed. In the green well. We will add a first antigen. In the gray well we will add second antigen. And in the red well we will add antibodies. After some time, both antigens and antibodies will diffuse from their wells, in all directions, and towards each other. The pattern of precipitation lines in this double immunodiffusion technique tells whether the given antigens are identical, partially identical or non-identical. Let's understand these patterns and their interpretation. Let's first take case 1. When the given two antigens are identical. By identical we mean that the two antigens share all epitopes or antigenic determinants. Let's represent first antigen by small letter A. Since the antigens are identica, also second antigen will also be represented by small letter A. Antibody is represented by capital letter A, and we know it is specific to antigen A. We will add antigens and antibodies in their respective wells. What will happen after some time? Precipitation lines will be formed at the zone of equivalence. Since the antigens are identical two precipitation lines will be formed. But they will fuse and result in an arc-shaped precipitation band. Now question is why they fuse? This is because these antigens are identical. An antibody cannot distinguish between them. So, at the zone of equivalence they will overlap each other and antigen concentration will increase at the overlapping area. This relative increase in antigenic concentration will result in an arc-shaped precipitin band. This band is made up of immune complexes formed by antigens A and antibodies A. So, in a double immunodiffusion assay, if we get arc-shaped precipitation band, we can interpret that the two antigens are identical. That means, they share all epitopes or antigenic determinants. This pattern of precipitation line is known as pattern of identity. Now let's look at the case 2. In this case, the given two antigens are non-identical. That means these antigens have no common epitopes. Here we will represent first antigen by small letter A, second antigen by small letter B. In the antibody well, we will add two types of antibodies, each specific to the antigen A and antigen B. Let's represent these antibodies by capital letter A and capital letter B. What will happen now? In this case also, two precipitation lines or bands will be formed. But they will not fuse, they will cross each other without any interaction. This happens because, each antigen has its own antibody with which they form precipitation band, at their respective zone of equivalence. Here the immune complex in the left precipitation line consists of antigen A and antibody A and the immune complex in the right precipitation line consists of antigen B and antibody B. So, in double immunodiffusion assay, if precipitation line pattern is across, 
we can interpret that given antigens have no common epitopes. They are non-identical. This pattern is known as pattern of non-identity. Now we will understand case 3. In this case given two antigens are partially identical. By partially identical we mean that these antigens share one or more common epitopes. Now suppose we have two antigens that share one of the epitopes. It means this one epitope is common in these two antigens. Let's represent these antigens by small letters as AX and BX. Here, X represents the common epitope. We add these antigens in the weld separately. In the third well we add antibodies specific to antigen A, X. Let's represent this antibodies by capital letters A, X. What will happen now? If you remember what cross-reactivity is, then it's easy to understand the result. Antigen A, X is specific to antibody A, X. So a precipitation band will be formed at their zone of equivalence. But antigen BX will also react with antibodies, that is with antibody X. This is because antibody X recognized the epitope X present on the antigen BX. So, here cross-reaction will occur. This seems a pattern of identity, but some antibodies, that is antibody A, are not captured by the antigen. These antibodies cross the initial precipitation line formed to combine with more epitopes. This results in a spur formation. Thus, an incomplete cross or an arc with a spur is formed in this case. So, if in double immunodiffusion assay, a precipitation band with a spur is formed, then we can interpret that the given antigens share one or more epitopes. These antigens are partially identical. This pattern is known as pattern of partial identity. In this video lecture, we understood that by looking at the patterns of precipitation line formed in double immunodiffusion assay, we can interpret whether the given antigens are identical, non-identical, or partially identical.